Growing up here in New York City, Felipe Lopez was so good at basketball, people compared him to Michael Jordan. But he was also a symbol of hope, a hero for immigrants and plenty of others back in the Dominican Republic. As a teenager, Lopez moved from the DR to New York where he became the top-ranked high school basketball player in the country. He eventually made it to the NBA. And while he didn't have the pro career of Michael Jordan, his journey and impact off the court are now the focus of a new 30 for 30 documentary from ESPN. This segment is part of our Chasing the Dream initiative on poverty and opportunity in America. The Dominican Dream makes its broadcast debut tonight. Here's a look. It was the heyday of high school basketball, and he was the ambassador. Games weren't games. Games were events in the mid-90s, and Felipe was the reason why. The 90s in New York City had so much talent in basketball. And he was the guy. <laughs> it wasn't even close, man. He was LeBron before LeBron. That presence. Felipe walking into the gym would be like Jay-Z walking into a club. Everybody turned their heads and said, it's Felipe. He walked on the court, and even before he did anything, you knew he was going to just destroy everybody. He was a rock star. He was a legit rock star in this town that had so many other rock stars. But none of those rocks were shining the way Felipe was. He was the mayor of Washington Heights, prince of the city. He was the king of New York. And joining me now is the one, the only, the Bronx's own, Felipe Lopez. Thank you so much for joining us on Metro Focus. Thank you so much for having me. Your 30 for 30 story was really, really compelling. And it was one of those basketball stories that I think takes the viewer back to a point in time because so often sports move so quickly that we forget about some of our favorite players. But I want to start where the film starts with your journey from the Dominican Republic to the Bronx, New York. What was that like for you? It was different. It was shocking for me coming from the Dominican Republic. Uh, first of all, I was not able to speak the language. So that was right away was a barrier, uh, something that I have to overcome. And uh, just having the sensation of just feeling a little bit like out of the place, uh, it was really something that kind of it, it pushed me, it drove me a little bit to, mm -hmm. to want to be acceptable. And the one place that I was really able to be comfortable was in, in the basketball court. You know, so I, I kind of took advantage of the fact that I was able to play basketball at an early age, kind of okay. Uh, to drive me more and to be acceptable and, and kind of uh, take some of the challenges that I was facing in every day uh, uh, through basketball. One of the things that also comes through so much uh, from what I even remember about your story when you first made that huge splash in the New York uh, media, but also in the film, is the impact that your presence on the basketball court had for the Dominican community here in New York. And I'm wondering, how did that affect you, having so many people put so many hopes and dreams and expectations all on the shoulders of a high school kid? Well, you know what? Uh, when you talk about sports and you talk about Latino, right away the first thing that comes to your mind is baseball. Yep. So, you know, I, I was that unicorn. <laughs> I was that one kid that out of the blue Spanish and, you know, that it kind of came into the scene pretty fast, you know, by my fourth year in the United States, you know, people still trying to get, you know, everything together, trying to get acquainted with the, with the uh, way of life out here. And I'm going to cover Sports Illustrated. Yeah, that must have been really, like, bizarre an uh, experience. It was a, a, to a point, I have no clue how huge of a deal that was. Um, but I, I was able to find out pretty quickly. Everywhere I moved, people had the, the magazine on the hang, you know, wanted me to sign it. But I think what really struck me more about being in the cover of Sports Illustrated was that it came around a time that the Latino really needed it in New York City. Because mm -hmm. when, you, when, you, when you think about in the 90s, you know, the image that you have from Latinos, especially in the Washington High area, it was such of a negative kind of image that, you know, by having this, this really warm and positive, you know, uh, stories just coming out into the scene through basketball and through my persona, was really that people really embrace. 
Of course, and uh, we get a chance to see what that embrace looked like. I mean, pretty much your section of the bleachers, the would, yeah, the fans, it would be a party. It Can really you just was. sort of describe to our viewers a little bit about what that party looked like from your perspective on well, the Well, for me, it was more of a, a drive. It, it, it gave me the sensation that, you know, okay, I'm playing for right side school and, and everything is well. I'm playing within the team. But I'm also playing for a community. Mm -hmm. And that community look of oh, just people with their plantain, with their platano, <laughs> and their drums, and the guida, and you know, up and playing music and just dancing the whole time and screaming. So it, it, it really brought that little bit of a swag, Latino swag, and that warm blood that we have, that everything we want to turn it into a party. And basically, that's pretty much what it was. It was a party while I played. <laughs> Well, so much of your story is such a quintessential American story of, you know, the immigrant coming to America yes. and really realizing so many of your dreams. I'm wondering, why was it when you were in high school and you had this chance to jump right into the NBA, making huge millions of dollars, you opted instead to get your education at St. Yeah. John's? Uh, my mom. My mother was a teacher for 25 years. Someone that came here as a hard worker, worked in the factory, that always saw that our opportunity, especially for the whole sacrifice that her and my father was going through, it was to give us a better opportunity to be educated, to be able to take you know the opportunity that basketball provided uh, to become a better person. And you know, I think you have to take your hat off to the LeBrons and to the Kobe's, mm -hmm. you know, for the great success story. But behind that, there's other story or other high school players that did not do too well that also didn't end up with an education. So now you really falling out of the pit or taking advantage of what the sport is supposed to do for you. You know, and I really feel that uh, now making the jump to the NBA around that time, it really gave me the opportunity to be who I am right now, mm -hmm. an ambassador to the NBA kids for the past 10 years. You know, someone that's able to prov provide back to the community, not just from the standpoint of sports, but also from the education, from the mentoring program, from so many other professionals that provided for me. And, you know, I, I just feel like I'm blessed to just be able to provide and do that because of the, the community that did it for me. Well, it sounds like you have absolutely no regrets about the way th everything panned out. Well, I'm sitting here talking about a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> about your life, which is so, it's it's such, such a great. good... It's, 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 it's like mind-blowing just to know that, you know, I'm playing basketball and now I'm, I'm pretty much just, my whole face is in the big screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, James Bond pretty much have nothing on me. <laughs> That is a great <laughs> note to end it on. Felipe Lopez, it is an honor to meet you. Thank you um, so much. Again, you were one of the players that sparked my interest in basketball thank when so I was much. a young kid. So thank you so much. I hope people say able to enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I really thank you for having me the opportunity to share my story. And just a reminder, for more on how to watch Felipe in the Dominican Dream, head over to our website at metrofocus.org.